It started with this tweet from David Sinclair. Only 0.54% of all National Institutes of Health funding is devoted to fundamental aging research, even though aging causes 80% of all diseases. Where's the logic? And ended up with me going to Harvard Medical School to ask the big question. If aging is the root cause of almost every ugly disease, why is it not the highest priority for everyone? But of course, before we go, let's double check the numbers first. So if you look at the papers, NIH runs on about $62.5 billion a year. Okay. So what does National Institute of Aging, NIA, gets out of this? Uh -huh, here we go. Down to 4 billion. Ah, well, sounds decent on paper. But do you know how they call this money in Harvard? Alzheimer fund. And here's why. If you look at how much the Institute of Aging actually spends on aging, it's a whooping 337 million, which is less than 10% of the NIA's money. And if I do my math right, divide 337 by 62.500 times 100, and we get 0.54%, which is how much we put towards understanding the aging process. <sighs> You know how everyone complains that healthcare in the United States should really be called sick care because we have no prevention? And here's the basic pie chart which represents the same notion on the global scale. But at least we have reproduced David Sinclair's numbers, which doesn't happen every day. <laughs> now let's ask the question why longevity research is stalled in academia and then discuss what we can do to improve the situation. We are at uh, Harvard Medical School. Yeah. I ask my colleagues, why do you think it's so important to work on Alzheimer's, on cancer, on arthritis, but not on aging, which is probably a common underlying cause. Mm -hmm. What I hear back is that somehow it's about fairness. They feel that sick people suffer and old people also suffer, but sick people live unfairly short life. And so they feel that it's very important to get everybody to the same to kind of level uh, the field. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, so, so then uh, that's a downside of libertarian views. <laughs> it's a faulty <laughs> reasoning because obviously there are many kind of inherent inherent inequalities. For example, we know that if you are born with a Y chromosome, you're going to live 10% shorter lifespan. Males mm. live short, yeah. much shorter yeah, lives. Yeah, in general, yeah. uh, so that's an injustice. Let's focus on, well, uh, on that. Yeah, because it affects uh, more population in general. It affects us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, for some reason, there are many misconceptions. Definitely, if we all get involved, get organized, I think there is a fighting chance. Science advances one funeral at a time. Very appropriate for aging biology. <laughs> and this might be okay for other sciences, but our clock is ticking and if you just wait and do nothing until the new generation comes in and cures aging, it would be too late for us. So the only way we can work this out is to understand that A. Nobody's coming to help and B, it's up to us, me and you, to participate in citizen science and bring as many friends as possible. So what you can do right now is like this video, comment, share and watch the rest of this conversation we had, where we talk about a project anyone can jump in right away and speed up the longevity drug discovery 1000 times. Living is smart, aging is bad. See you there.